with pairing there for Huskanderovic. Oh, it's excellent. It's, it's kind of like in contrast to uh, Adelaide United. They've looked for uh, some solid, I guess, foundations in the back line. And uh, who better than Monica from Brazil? We all remember Monica from the, the Olympics, which was pretty exciting. But uh, I think it's, it's excellent that we now have a Brazilian in the league. She'll bring a flair, but, but also she's a, a pretty competent defender. So I think that's going to be really good for Adelaide. Well, we're about to find out what they can do. Back to you, Amy. Thank you very much, Stefan. Exciting a game ahead. Joe, as we've mentioned, there's a few young Matildas missing. Uh, no Matildas in these squads, and we've got a couple of players out. Rachel Quigley is one of those. She will, she'll be absolutely fantastic when she comes back into the squad. Uh, and my game to ask you for a prediction. It's always hard early in the season. It is. Look, if I was a fence sitter, I'd be calling a draw, but I, I, I need to go for a result, and I think Melbourne victory, they'll be able to settle quicker than, than this new Adelaide team, so I'm Go on, Melbourne victory. All right, kick off not too far away here in Adelaide. Can the Lady Reds get off to a dream start? Or will the victory leave victorious? We will find out after this break. Kick off coming your way now. What a sensational performance! England's Tour of India, live on Fox Sports. Hello world, I'm a hacker. I say together, we tear down the walls. PS4 for the players. It's the big one at Nissan. Get 1% finance across the Nissan range. Hurry, this offer must end November 30. Woolies are now giving away fresh fruit to any kid shopping with an adult, which I think is pretty good. If just one kid gets an extra piece of fruit because it's free, you've got to be happy with that, right? It's a small gesture, but I think it shows real commitment to making Aussie kids fresh food kids. Brilliant. Free fruit for kids. Come on. That's why I pick Willies. This is one of the most important digs of the century. It's from the retirement era. This is unbelievable. It's some kind of implement used by the golfer. Discover how to save your retirement today. Now, what's Henderson doing wrong, everyone? Anyone? Ah! Up and Go is the most important drink of the day. It's got the protein, energy and fibre of four wheat mix and milk. Nice one, Henderson! Introducing Nivea 4-in-1 Firming Body Oil, an intensively nourishing all-over body oil that quickly absorbs into your skin, helps firm skin in two weeks, even skin tone, nourishes intensively and reduces the appearance of stretch marks. Rated 4 out of 5 stars by Australian women, it's a fast-absorbing all-over body oil that gives you firmer, even-looking and beautiful skin. Nivea 4-in-1 Firming Body Oil, new to the Nivea Q10 Firming Body Range. You know, it'd be a lot easier to buy these all in one go. She's spoiling the magic. ANZ with Apple Pay. Get on board. This program brought to you by Unibet. Gamble responsibly. The stunning Hyundai Tucson. And NAB. More than money. W League is back. Welcome to all of you joining us for our broadcast here in the City of Churches as Adelaide United welcome Melbourne victory in the opening round of the Westfield W League. Huge excitement around this ninth season of the Women's League, which launched with the tagline, Be Real, Be Remarkable. 
Well, Adelaide has turned on a really remarkable afternoon for us here with the temperature hovering around 22 degrees. There is a light breeze fluttering the flags and the playing surface looks an absolute picture. No doubt there will be a few nerves with the sides ready to move into the tunnel and both hoping that this season will result in a more fortuitous outcome than the previous one. The Lady Reds missing out on finals football by just a whisker while the victory struggled to make an impact. Plenty of international players have made the move down under as well as a host of local talent, some established, others perhaps with the chance to announce themselves on the big stage. Adelaide has just four players remaining from last season. Oh, Victory have retained about half. They've also undergone a considerable rebuild in the off-season. Both sides are affected by the absence of their young Matildas, but the opportunities for other youngsters will be instructive as to how deep each squad runs as they're led out by their respective captains. W League debutant Stella Rigon for the home side and three-season veteran Christine Nan for the victory. 13 W League debutants are set to run on today. Seven players with W League experience and eight internationals donning Australian club colours. Well, as the players line up to prepare for kickoff, let's take a check on the team lineups. Adelaide United have broken new ground, signing the first Brazilian player to grace this league. Monica Hickman Alves, a powerful central defender on loan from Orlando Pride, will line up in front of keeper Sarah Willisey to shore up the Lady Reds backline alongside new American recruit Katie Norton from Chicago Red Stars. Norton Club teammates from the US, midfielder Danny Colaprico and Sofia Huerta complete the Chicago Triumvirate. Adriana Jones joins from Newcastle Jets this season, while Campagnale, Klaich, Ladas and captain Stella Rigon are all starting on their home turf. For Melbourne victory after the squad was all but decimated prior to Season 8, they've done some rebuilding in the recruitment of goalkeeper Bianca Henninger from Houston Dash, and Chicago Red Stars defender Samantha Johnson completes a strong spine, which includes returning Washington Spirit midfielder and new captain Christine Nairn, also English striker Natasha Dowie, who impressed in her guest stint last season. Well, it's been a big job for Adelaide coach Huskanderovic. He's the newest coach in the league, joining up just one month ago after Mark Jones vacated the post to head up to the Newcastle Jets in the A-League. Skanderovic was coach of the Dandenong Thunder in the Victorian National Premier League prior to joining Adelaide as both head of National Youth League and the W League side. On the other bench, Jeff Hopkins is no stranger to the Women's League as coach of the Brisbane Raw side from 2008 to 2012. The former Welsh international defender took them to two titles in four finals campaigns. And after a stint with the men, he now returns to the state where he started his Australian career and is now hoping to bring that winning feeling back to victory. In the middle with the whistle, Katie Patterson, who made headlines last year as the first female referee to officiate a men's A-League game when she took charge of an FFA Cup game. She is a familiar face here in the W League, 26 matches in charge, and today she'll be assisted by Samuel Kais and Aaron Galanti running the lines, with Madison Kennedy taking on fourth official duties. Well, the players prepare for Patterson's whistle, which signals the start of new campaigns. The W League, as I said, boasts 25 players from the US League this season. Eight are from Chicago Red Stars, with half featuring today. Three are in red and W League newbies, while well, their Chicago teammate Samantha Johnson has made the move from the US. Of course, Danielle Calaprico is one of her compatriots and she makes her W League debut for Adelaide United. Samantha Johnson has made the move from the sky blue of Sydney to the navy blue of the victory. Solid at the back for Sydney, she'll be valuable in improving a victory defence that leaked 28 goals last season. Well, the players poised for kickoff. A discussion in the middle of the park at the moment. Natasha Dowie and Christine Nan standing ready for kickoff. Maddie Patterson takes a quick check to make sure all's ready. A look at her watch. And we're underway here at High Marsh in Adelaide. This touch of the ball there for Stella Rigon, the captain here, and uh, Adelaide United making an energetic start. Well, Sarah Walsh here in commentary, there is no feeling like the first day of the new season. I love it. I love the, the uncertainty, Steph. There's been so much uh, movement in the off-season in terms of coaching staff, 
players from overseas and I really think this is this is the season that we're going to celebrate the internationals that we're bringing here. I think I've just seen a, uh, a Brazilian shirt in the crowd and it's really the beauty of football, isn't it? Well, nice ball there for Clayich and she tries to release one of those Americans, Sofia Huerta. Can't control, it will be a Reds throw in. Clayich with the back heel does find Huerta, who tries to cut it back. She's got some close attention from the victory defenders. What's going to be interesting, Steph, uh, Huss, the Adelaide coach, has come out and said that he wants to play quite direct, and I think that can be quite predictable in a way, and I think uh, Mel Melbourne Victory will be looking to capitalise on that and make sure that they don't allow Adelaide United to play out from the back. Uh, but in saying that, they have a, an extremely uh, talented back line in in Monica and Norton uh, holding up, solidifying that in the middle. Oh, now it's Natasha Dowie that's trying to chase down perhaps a bit of an optimistic ball. And uh, beautiful footwork there from Hayden Norton. Adelaide Reds defence, one of those powerful central defenders over here from Chicago Red Stars. Adriana Jones can't get on the end of that ball and it is back with Melbourne victory in the shape of Gulgin Kocha, who returns to the league after an injury-plagued season in 15-16. Plenty of new talent here for Melbourne victory as Rachel Alonso releases a ball down the right flank. Golden boot for her team in the Premier League. 17 goals last season, and I'm sure Victor will be hoping she puts a few in the back of the net for them. I think we're going to see a very con uh, contrasting team to what we did last year with Melbourne Victory. You can already see with a couple of the signings, uh, Dowie coming back, I'll be spending a bit more time in the pre-season. Um, I think having Celine Kurale come back as well is a really good signing for Melbourne Victory. She'll bring something off the bench. Ladas can't quite clear the ball, but it does find Hodson. Another turnover for victory, and it's uh, youngster Alex Cheel on the ball now, being hustled and harried by Huerta. It was interesting that, uh, to see Sam Johnson move back from Sydney FC. Uh, sorry, she's moved from Sydney FC to Melbourne Victory. I think it's a really good signing for Melbourne Victory. A really good move from uh, Jeff Hopkins. I like that he's also brought Anisha, uh, Isha Norrie from uh, Brisbane Raw. Uh, she's really going to do a, a good job in the midfield and, and being that uh, holding midfielder role and, and, and being able to play forward as well if needed. And Jeff Hopkins, with uh, plenty of experience up in Brisbane, would have had a chance to see a Shinori play as uh, Natasha Dowie tries to create an opportunity back to Nan. It's through to Chiel, who can't control, but their side will have the first corner of the game. And predictably, Sarah Walsh, Christine Nan trots towards the corner post. a jostle for position in front of keeper Sarah Willisey's goal. Trouble seeing around these Melbourne players as it's put up towards the back post. Able to get a hit on those ball. Which, uh, flies out on the far side. Perhaps a little bit deep for anyone to make anything of that. Yeah, pretty, pretty early days to make a comment on Adelaide United at the moment, but I'm quite disappointed as no one would be too surprised that Alex Chidiak isn't here today and we don't get to see her. I think they will miss her in the midfield playing in that 10 position. Yeah, indeed, away with the young Matildas, as are a, a number of others. Run here from Puerto, she's bundled over. Checked on by Nan. Looks like the medical attention will be... way on as we have another look at what occurred there. Uh, she's got an awkward position here with her, her ankle maybe. And there's Mel Taranto who we saw in the midfield as a debutante last season. Twin Adriana is on the bench. Looks quite serious. She hasn't moved since it happened. Well, just five minutes gone in this opening match. It's certainly not what we were expecting nor hoping to see. 
Taranto sits up. It doesn't look like she's uh, feeling too comfortable, though. Well, it just might look like her knee, actually. Left knee. See here again in the replay. Just awkward, awkwardly, uh, she's put downward pressure and a really awkward fall. She kind of seemed like she knew straight away. Certainly did extended pauses. Mel Taranto gets treatment. And uh, Sarah Walsh, we've had just a scant few five minutes to watch these teams in action. Uh, too early to say for you who's had the brightest start. All of the action has been down towards the Melbourne victory attacking end. Yeah, I think it's way too early to say, but um, Adelaide United probably needed this break here to regroup and actually get in a good position in the field. I think they've been on a bit under the pump um, and I think they've got a lot younger players and more uh, inexperienced players on the field. And with that, you know, there'll be a few nerves within the first 15 minutes and I know they probably need to try settling in this game and they won't do it as quick as uh, Melbourne victory. But I think this will actually help settle the nerves and it's not a good look here for Taranto. They've just done the ACL test on her. So hopefully it's nothing serious. And Taranto helped off to the sideline. So we'll wait to see what the verdict is there. Jeff Hopkins has sent all his substitutes down to, uh, to Limmer up under the watchful eye of his assistant coach. And it'll be Adelaide United get us underway. Stella Rigon standing prepared to take the free kick. On high and over the top. And it goes just wide of Bianca Henninger's goal. Paddy Norton is a tall figure. Five foot ten is the uh, central defender. There's a, a pretty good ball in. Did drift off to the left a little bit. It was, it was harder to actually get anything on that meaningful. Natasha Dowie, the striker, back defending it right back. It's down. Dowie, uh, it's a brief collision. And trots on her way. Natasha Dowie, of course, with a wealth of football experience and heritage as well. And uh, dad and uncle, both prominent in their football leagues overseas. It's Ruben battles for the ball, managed to get possession for Adelaide United. We see Mel Taranto having a jog on the sideline, moving a little bit more freely. We see in a few moments whether she will come back on as. Uh, Ball reaches the attacking third for Adelaide United. Wonderful work from Alex Cheel. W League Dembitant uh, not frightened at all. Oh, I really like this play here from Adelaide United. Weta, we get to see a little bit of her class, and, and that all started on the back of a, a really good turn where she drew the defender in and, and took her on and beat her with that first touch. And, and then uh, obviously Klaich had the fruits of that further down the field. So there, there are some positive signs. They look to be going forward first, and that's, that's a product of... Huss's approach to playing direct, and I think we're going to see that throughout the rest of the, the day. But um, I think to beat a team as, as classy as Melbourne Victory, they, they might need to change it up a little bit. Monica sends the ball flying up, can't connect with Jones. It's Johnson that got bundled over for Melbourne Victory. Adelaide United, of course, haven't had a lot of pre-season. Jeff Hopkins, in contrast, has had quite a bit of time to prepare this side. They had a friendly clash with Melbourne City last week and came out on top. Two goals to nil, of course, a number of influential players missing, but uh, nonetheless a good confidence builder. Katie Norton outleaps Natasha Dowie, but it is back with Melbourne. Great battle between those two. As Dowie runs away with the ball, tries to prod it through. Yeah, on that preparation, Steph, I don't think it's necessarily about um, the amount that they had. Uh, I think they had a good good four, five, six weeks solid preparation. I think it was the changing coach, and obviously then the result of that is the coach and, uh, sorry, the, the playing style that the coach wants to play. The coach also inherited this team. Haas has in inherited. Sorry, well, she could have been on there for Christine Nan, and she has won her side the free kick, and... Uh, quite an interesting position, something Nan certainly is well capable of. Yeah, she's, you could see that she's uh, taken the ball in front of the defender. Really smart play there from Christine Nan. Stepping up straight to the ball to take it as well. Well, 
Alyssa Taranto is now going to be replaced by her twin, Adriana Taranto. We're not expecting to be injected into the game this early and uh, not good news on Mel Taranto. Hopefully we'll get an update for you during this half. It is Christine Nan standing ready and the players gathered at the top of the 18-yard box. Over the top, Dowie running in. No real problems as Willisy comes to collect. First touch there for Taranto. Colaprico. Tapped out by Huerta, looking for Rigon down the left flank. Turned over and now Alonso. Gets it forward, perhaps a little bit hopeful, looking for Natasha Dowie in the front line. Cotter in the action as well, and uh, no one aren't having too many problems getting between those Adelaide lines. No, they are, but they're actually playing quite uh, direct themselves, I think. they. Well, burst three there from Dragana Clayish. She's got Jones waiting in the middle, does opt for Jones. Oh, Jones is dispossessed, wins the ball back, has done well, and wins the side a free kick. It was good play. Uh, Melbourne Victor on the on the back foot here. Weren't really in a good position to, to defend and, and have had to make this, I guess, this scrappy play here where bringing Jones down in a really bad position for them. But uh, positive signs for Adelaide again. They're looking to go forward with every single ball and by doing so puts your, puts your team in a really good position like this. Bianca Henninger, the... Houston Dash goalkeeper instructs her wall. Protecting the left side of her goal. Stella Rigon delivers the free kick. Does go over and it's in. And Adelaide United have their first goal. Captain Stella Rigon starts their season with a beauty. It was a gorgeously lined up free kick. What a way for her to open her account. Oh, Steph, it was a wonderfully taken free kick here. It had a really good amount of power. Yes, it did take a deflection. But you'll see the captain, the new local captain for Adelaide United, steps up, hits it sweetly. It's taken the, the keeper off balance, but it's in the back of the net. And it's exciting. It's probably not uh, what, the, what the crowd would have been expecting here today. But I'm very happy for Rigon. There was maybe a little bit of doubt about having a, a newbie, having the local girl not having an international player step up to take the captaincy and, and she's just, uh, she's really confirmed why she's been chosen by Haas. She certainly has and uh, it was wonderful news for Stella Rigon because uh, as she said to me prior to play, she's not a spring chicken, but uh, she has the, perhaps the world experience and, and the experience off the pitch as well to lead this team and, and what a way to start that off. Now cheer for Melbourne victory as they try to perhaps find some parity. Dowie powerful as ever. It's beaten, but it is back with Natasha Dowie. Moving towards the centre of the field. Kocha waiting. Gorgian Kocha. Norrie. And the ball eventually dribbles through harmlessly into Sarah Willisey's hand and Quite a patient build-up, but came to naught. Yeah, Adelaide United are really def uh, defending quite deep and, and very compact. There's, there's not a lot of width in their, in their defence, so it's going to be extremely difficult for Victory to break them down today, especially with those tight little balls in the, in the centre of the park. Well, let's get an update from the Melbourne Victory bench. Amy Duggan. Thank you, Steph. Yes, as we saw Mel Tarando go down there with a bit of a knee injury. She has come off the field. She obviously won't be taking further part in today. It's not great news for the Melbourne Victory. They can't confirm an ACL injury, but it is certainly a knee injury, and uh, they will be going for scans later in the week. So not great news for her. And, of course, she's replaced by her twin sister on the park. Thank you very much indeed, Amy, and we hope that it proves not to be too serious for Mel Taranto. We see far too many knee injuries in the W League. Of course, we have a couple of those uh, players who've had injuries in the past season coming back. Sarah Walsh, it's great to see Selene Kurile on the uh, 
on the victory bench. It's been a while since we've seen her. He injured herself in round one last season, so great to have you back, Celine. Yeah, she's looking very fit too. Uh, we got to see a little bit of her in the warm-up, so I'm excited to see her come on later. Monica sends the ball back to Willis, who can't clear. It's now in the touch of Dowie, and the England international has found parity. One all here in Adelaide. Natasha Dowie with the equaliser. And that was just a pure goalkeeping error there. Let the ball dribble loose, and Dowie's way too experienced to pick that up easily and sent it home. Well, if you needed a clip to uh, to typify and uh, explain Dowie's game, that, that would actually have to be it. There's nothing in this play here. Monica's taken the ball back. It's a fine. Willis has taken a really bad touch, but who's there to actually put apply real pressure onto the keeper? Dowie. Whether she's working from the from the front line, back into the back line in the midfield, she's always working. And it's probably why she's going to be successful in this league. Really good finish there. Right time, right place, but she's made it happen. Yeah, tenacious work from the England striker. We saw a hint of it perhaps last season, but also, well, she perhaps not the best pass from Monica to her keeper either. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a crisp pass, but it's still a keeper should really deal with that. It would be interesting to see how Willisie bounces back from that. Indeed, now it is Taranto on the run. She tries her luck. This time Willisie with sure hands. Gratefully collects Sarah Willisie also on debut here in the W League. Been in and around the training side before. One could expect some nerves, but... Undoubtedly settle in as the minutes tick by. Kocha goes down the right and uh, athletic tumble on the far side for victory gives them a throw. Yeah, no, this is this is a late challenge here, but what will also be interesting, Steph, is to see how the the Adelaide United backline treat their keeper now. Will they look to play back? Will they look to play it safe? Um, and I'm, I'm not sure how much confidence they will have in Willisie at the moment. This might uh, affect how high they play and, and how quickly they drop into the back line. Well, the main jostling is at the top of the area. Sam Johnson's there. Dowie, of course. Rachel Alonso. All sent powerfully and it's beyond the reach of Willisie. Wow, if Dowie had been just a little bit... Perhaps further closer to the goal, she would have been in position to head that home and have two. Yeah, Willis is a little bit shaken up there. If you're going to come out, you really need to take that ball. I believe it was Dowie waiting in the wings for that. But equally, there, there was no defender on that Melbourne victory player. They're a little bit rattled at the moment from that goal. There's certainly been plenty of action in the last five or so minutes. 20 minutes gone here in Adelaide and is one all thanks to a wonderful free, free kick from Adelaide captain Stella Rigon and a neat little equaliser from international Natasha Dowie for Melbourne. And Adelaide trying to go through again a lovely ball there from Colaprico and it is back in from Adriana Jones and the former Newcastle Jet has her first goal for Adelaide United wonderfully fed by Sophia Huerta and a superb finish Adriana Jones well put quite, quite simply you will not see a better goal than that I know we've just started the league but uh, unbelievable combination play here starting with Calaprico showing her class first match great through ball splitting the defense get to see a great ball in here great finish from uh, Jones as well but look at this perfectly pinpoint ball from uh, Weta. This is the combination between the, the two Chicago Red Stars. Unbelievable splitting ball and, and great finish. Jones put a, a perfectly timed run in to finish that as well. I know we're going to see some goals here today, Steph. You're absolutely right. Three already in the first 20 minutes. Now, Melbourne victory rattled once more. You can, you can see the uh, the understanding between those two Chicago Red Stars. You certainly can, and uh, creates a wonderful spine for the team. Of course, their teammate, Katie Norton, in the centre of defence as well, next to Monica. And as I mentioned earlier in the call, we have eight Chicago Red Stars players in the league. 
I wonder who that contact was because uh, they've all trickled down under. Wonderful to see them playing here. And of course, Samantha Johnson is uh, on the opposite side in the white and blue today for the victory. So a teammate of theirs as Adelaide go off on another run and Colaprico showing her skill feeds the ball through beautifully for Hodson. Hodson with the delivery in the centre of the park. Jones jumps. Huerta unable to get on the end of it. Colaprico once again showing why she is such a midfield maestro. Yeah, she's shown unbelievable vision to be able to play that ball at the time that she did. It's all about the timing of the pass to keep your striker on uh, onside. Perfectly weighted ball. Campagnale covers a loose pass from Norrie. Deemed to... Yes, certainly deemed to have fouled. <laughs> Time perhaps for Melbourne to regather their thoughts. Both uh, both goals have been against the run of play, so it's extremely hard to predict what's going to happen next. But I think these two teams, it, it goes to show that they're both still settling into this match. This one a bit further out for Nan. Considers her options. Alonso, Johnson, both powering into the middle. The delivery, unfortunately, a bit flat. Mel Taranto, I beg your pardon, Adriana Taranto can't connect. And Riggan clears the ball beautifully towards Huerta. Huerta releases Jones, who unfortunately is offside. Wonderful vision again, though, from the Reds forward. Well, that was close for Melbourne victory again. Lucky that the ball was played a little bit too late from Weta because you do not want to get stuck in a foot race with Jones. I think uh, having a strike force with that pace is partly the reason why Huss wants to play that direct football. As he said it before the match, it's dangerous to get those balls in behind. Certainly, as you mentioned, the speed of Adriana Jones. She made the trek down to Adelaide when Father Mark was it's going to be in charge as Christine Nan sends a lovely ball through, but unfortunately Natasha Dowie can't get around Katie Norton. Well, they're showing some experience there, Steph. Uh, Norton and Monica have dropped really early. They understand uh, the prowess that Dowie has and, and the, the danger and impact she can have in behind. So they're dropping really quick on her. It's going to be difficult to get those balls in there. As you can see, the possession distinctly favouring Melbourne victory, 82%, but been able to convert a lot of that into meaningful attack. And of course, being caught twice with some wonderful counter-attacking football as Natasha Dowie looks to latch on to another loose ball. Bobbles up in the air, now brought down by Lattice. Ellie Lattice gets the ball away to release Dragana Klaich. Can't quite manage to outrun youngster Alex Cheel. Neat work from Cheel, two debutantes in the league. And Taranto on the run to Nan. Cheel again back with Nan. Jones coming in to help defend. Jones will get the flag up, but it is uh, Huerta off on the run. And, uh, the referee calls a halt to proceedings. Well, that was an actually that was a really, really good ball there from uh, Norton. I think Melbourne Victory's issue at the moment is uh, if you look at Natasha Dower, she's playing up very, very high and she's quite isolated. The, the three midfielders are actually dropped way too deep. It's, it's not working. There's too much of a gap. We have the right forward that's, that's way too far away and she doesn't have any support around her, so she's starting to get frustrated doing that unnecessary running back into the midfield to, to search for the ball. Again in the play. Physical work from Adriana Taranto. Alia Privatelli. Cheel. Johnson. Back to Cheel and Melbourne working hard to try and clear the ball out of their defensive third. Won't be wanting to keep it there too long. Adelaide are just too quick up that end of the park.
ball from Nan, but Norton once again with her experience blocks, blocks the run of Leah Privatelli. And then draws the foul. Uh, she, she's having a great game, Norton. Some really good uh, pressure being applied from Adelaide United on the ball at the moment. It's really, victory of finding it really difficult to get out and really having to earn their way out of spaces. And when they do, they're coughing it up cheaply. Well, look at that from Colaprico. She's so quick to control the ball, managing to evade Taranto. As if she's seen Playage, who unfortunately was just a shade offside. A little bit of uh, inexperience from Clay Itch there. She had the uh, the privilege of being able to see the entire back line and, and should have held her run. You can see that direct play. It, it, it's actually hurting victory. Don't know where their runners are and they're not sure when that ball's going to be hit. They need to be ready and backtracking ready for that. Well, uh, Adriana Jones, as I mentioned, made the trip to Adelaide because her father, Mark, was in charge of the women's side. Travelled down here, joined the Lady Reds, and look, he's come to have a look at her play. He was, of course, uh, transferred back to Newcastle when he took charge of the men's A-League side, but he'll undoubtedly be proud of the contribution that he's seen his daughter make already in this match. Yeah, she's going to be a, a player to watch in the future for me, Jones. I think she needs to refine a few things around her game, but ultimately she has a really good nose for getting getting in good attacking positions, and she's quick. So those two those two in combination are are, uh, are pretty potent for to be a dangerous striker. I think when to, when she matures as a player, she's going to be really difficult to stop. Yeah, she's come on. We saw her her pace and her potential perhaps at Newcastle Jets last season. Just the one goal in her season there. However, it was already obvious what perhaps she might be able to offer. Just 14 appearances for the Newcastle Jets, and I think Huskanderovic would be very happy indeed that she decided to stay here in Adelaide. Yeah, Sam Johnson has a, a big, um, big job on her hands with Jones. There's a pace mismatch there. Norton's header goes down as far as Christine Nan. Melbourne victory still on the hunt for an equaliser. Johnson pops a foot from Jones. She's gone down, looks to be in a little bit of pain. Part of the center of defense for Sydney FC last season. This was laid here, Steph, from Jones. She's come in at speed to defend and, and basically didn't hold a run and uh, Johnson got rid of the boards. She's been hit late. So the commentators curse while she was saying so many good things about her. Oh, well, look, she's uh, she's young. These are the things that I'm talking about refining in her game, giving away a, giving away a free kick when her team's doing really well, where she didn't need to. She need, all she needed to do was hold the defender up there. She wasn't going anywhere, but coming in to give away a silly foul, these are the things that come with maturity. Well, Samantha Johnson up and about, and she'll run out that knock, no doubt. As we mentioned, uh, another one of the Chicago Red Stars contingent who's made her way back down under for another season. Taranto muscled off the ball. Laprico showing her worth again, and that triangle that they're creating between Colaprico, Huerta, and Jones could really reap some tremendous rewards for the Lady Reds this season. And that is the ball a little bit perhaps overcooked. Hit it down by Nan for Taranto. Norrie. Bulgin Kocher on the right. Kocher, the only player of the Melbourne Victory Championship squad from a few years ago. Alonso gets the neat little turn. Rachel Alonso delivers. Dowie's waiting, headed away by Norton. And easily cleared by the Reds. Super control from Huerta once more. Lattice with the quick ball. It's collected by Cheel, who saw it a long way off. And a neat little ball from Christine Nan. To and fro between, well, between the victory players, and they've. Uh, that clash has resulted in the first card <laughs> of, the, of the match so far. Crowd clearly not agreeing with that, but. Uh, that's, a, that's a fair yellow for me. 
you look at Dow, he's used to body really well here. Campagnoli knew that uh, the only way to stop this attack is bringing the player down. Look, look at the use of the body here from Dowie. And then taking the player down. So dangerous position here for Melbourne victory. You, you can sense that tension out there at the moment, can't you? There is such a rivalry between these two clubs. New players, new coaches, it doesn't matter. The, the shirt's the same colour. Uh, there's just a, a history between these two teams that filters down from the men to the women. And perhaps set to be more evenly matched than in seasons past. Rachel Alonso and Christine Nan. Stand ready. Can Melvin get the equaliser? Nan delivers. Oh, and it was a beautiful shot parried away by Sarah Willisey, who certainly has her confidence back. Lovely save. Well, that save will do wonders for her confidence. It was one of those balls that was difficult to see. They had the wall up, and, and it actually take, uh, take a little bit of a, a curve towards the back end. You can see that was going in. That was hit sweetly from, uh, from Christine Nan. Absolutely struck that fine. And uh, Privatelli hovers at the top of the box as Christine Nan looks to deliver the in-swing. It's low and flat, hooked in. Clayich looking to run away with it. Put it forward by Puerta, but it's back with Melbourne victory. Johnson sends a ball and that drops nicely for Christine Nan, who bobbles it in the air. There's a head on it. And it is Campagnale sends it to safety for the Reds. Uh, Clayage would have won that one back. Oh, possibly another chance here for victory. Well kept in by Nan. Alonso chasing down, but Rigon takes control. What a beautiful little passage of play, though, from uh, Melbourne victory. Uh, Hope for one, definitely. That uh... we well, look at Clayage here. That's that's got to go on goal. That's it's completely mistimed header right there. Potentially a, a goal there from victory. Sorry, that wasn't uh, Clayage. Privatelli. Seven and seventeen can be confusing, <laughs> of course. A lot of new faces for us, Sarah Walters. And also as well. the different teams. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention that. <laughs> Bianca Henninger gratefully picks up a ball that didn't challenge her goal. It's been a uh, bit of a tough start for the Houston Dash keeper. Go, she's in, she's in. Right away. Oh, nice delivery again from Nan. This time Privatelli's behind it. Hodson does well to keep Privatelli away. Now back with Klaich, who is in the red shirt. Thanks, Steph. The attack is on again for Adelaide United. It's one of the youngsters whose throw-in can't find the mark, but another one of the young talents picked up as Huerta now runs away. The ball, she's brought down and... She'll pick up a free kick for Adelaide in once again a dangerous position. Looks like Samantha Johnson's picked up her first card. Yeah, there's a bit of niggling going on. I think the referee's trying to bring the match into... Just bring it down a little bit and actually get the players a little bit under control. I think that's why that yellow was pulled out. But uh, she has got the ball there. I think she's maybe collected Huerta with a, a hand accidentally in the end. Again, a good position here for Adelaide. Well, just 10 minutes remaining in this half. What a boon it would be for the Lady Reds to have perhaps a two-goal push in them. It's not too far from the same position we saw from Stella Regon for the first goal. Henninger yeah. declares herself ready. Eddie Patterson wants a word to the players fighting for position at the top of the box. Regan delivers, it's high. It's over the crossbar, not quite the connection that she made with that first one. 
Yeah, it's not bad. It's uh, just a little bit off target. But what I'm excited about Rigon, it basically shows that, in my opinion, there's, there's a bit of a gap between the W League and the, the WMPL, the underpinning league. But I think uh, Rigon is showing us that that gap is not is closing. I think she's really uh, stamped her authority in this match and, and been a really good player for Adelaide, Adelaide United. And Chill's back pass put the pressure on Hennier, forced to clear rapidly. Nan switches play, coach her on the far side. Coach her looking for Alonso who has pace and, as we know from the Premier League, has an eye for goal. Campagnale in close pursuit. Plenty of attention and uh, nice defence from Georgia Campagnale. Yeah, they, they seem to have everything under control when the ball's in front of them. Anything in, uh, and even when it's um, a controlled possession. I think uh, where they're weak is, is when the balls are being played in behind their attack and, and they're scrambling to get back into defence. But when, when anything is in front of them, I think they're quite set. Been quite solid in defence. Great battle there between Hodson and Privatelli. As Alex Cheel, another Premier League colleague, takes the throw in. And what's also interesting about all these Premier League players, Sarah Walsh, is that they don't look totally out of their depth in their debut on this pitch. I was actually expecting to see a, a bigger gap, Steph, between the, the international players. And, and to be quite perfectly honest, the, the level of training um, and, and it's, it's, as I said, it's closing. I think the, the level of coaching and the amount of training they're doing, the quality of training is lifted, and we're starting to see the, the rewards of that. Rigon is a perfect example of that, stepping straight into a, a W League team to captain. And she's, she's not only not out of place, she's actually standing out today as one of, a really solid player. Well, she'll be very happy indeed with this first passage of play. As the clock ticks ever closer to half time. Melbourne victory still looking for that equaliser. Adelaide United had them on the run of play. Christine Nan tries to pick something, finds Rachel Alonso on the right flank. Alonso with the neat feet. Once again, it's the fight with Georgia Campagnale. This time the ball stays in. And Monica clears the ball, finds Jones halfway up the park. They have trouble with penetration. What the, can they do this time? Lovely ball from Nan Flag stays down for Dowie. Dowie crosses back, hoping to find Privatelli. And Emily Hodson sends it to safety. Oh, that's a tight call there. I'm not sure if she was offside. Look, it, it, didn't it? It did look offside. It was a good early ball through. Oh, it's not offside. Nice the thing is, the, well, the thing is, I think Victory thought it was offside because she didn't have a lot of support in the mid in the midfield coming through to get on the end of that ball. They play the whistle there. That's a potential goal. So another corner for Melbourne Victory. Short this time. And well dealt with by Colaprico. See those central defensive stalwarts in Katie Norton and Monica standing ever ready. The Adelaide defence has done beautifully thus far as the ball goes in for victory, headed away by Norton. And the linesman flag is up. We'll find it's an offside call there. Gives time to gives Adelaide time now to set up. Actually, have been struggling to get out of their own half. When victory have turned up, the applied pressure on the ball. And as we said, those two Adelaide goals have come against the run of play. Melbourne victory with more than 60% of the possession. And, and that's shown, Steph. I think with ball at feet, they've been the better team. Doesn't really mean much if you. Well, lovely ball over the top from Huerta. Oh, 
Johnson completely <laughs> foxes as a bit of afters with Jones and Johnson. She's a she's a fiery character that Jones. This is a really good match here with uh, Sam Johnson. As I said, there's a there's a pace mismatch here, but it's, uh, Johnson's a very smart player. Frico once again manages to take the ball away from Norrie. See, as soon as Adelaide retrieve possession in the middle of the park, they're always looking for that Puerta Clayich, perhaps Jones outlet, and it's come to fruition twice for them as Sheila tries to find a safe way to send the ball forward. Johnson back to Henninger to start again. Knocked down. Puerta looking that was going to be very dangerous indeed, but Bianca Henninger manages to clear. Turned over again. Playich now dispossessed by Chiel. Toronto. Johnson. As you said, Sarah Walsh, for all their possession, victory really struggling to find a way through. Now Kocha. Well, Adelaide United are doing an amazing job at uh, stopping Melbourne Victory from switching the point of attack. Well, they've now got Nan on the ball again. That's always dangerous. Christine Nan chips in the box for Natasha Dowie. It's blocked by Willisie. Privatelli runs in, still alive for Victory. Nan once again. Dowie wraps her left foot around it, but unfortunately can't get any real pace behind it. And the play comes to an end with Willisie gratefully gathering in. But well, they're really relying on Natasha Dowie to make something happen in the final third. She, again, doesn't have a huge amount of support. It was a great ball in here. Perfectly timed, weighted ball in between to split the two central defenders. Keeper's come out and done an amazing job. She's not out there and, and she's not in the correct position. Dowie slots that home. But she is your, your textbook number nine. Uh, I just absolutely love watching her play. Right time, right place. She just has a nose for goal. And it's as so I said, tenacious. It, well, it's, it's why she'll be uh, successful in this league. You need to be able to do the work. And you'll find uh, she's always defending, whether she's dropping back into the midfield to poach. Well, I could drop for Jones. Henninger once again called on to clear to safety. Get it back into play by Norton, now Privatelli. Oh, and that has dropped for Huerta. Well, that could have been a very lucky connection indeed. Well, Henninger hasn't had to do too much today, but uh, when she has been called upon, she hasn't made a mistake. Campagnale and Rachel Alonso have had a wonderful battle down in that corner for this first half. There's just a couple of minutes remaining. Can... Adelaide United put another ball in the back of the net. Sophia Huerta in the area sends it straight into the arms of the waiting keeper. Well, now perhaps another chance for victory to mount an attack. Another beautiful ball from Nan to Dowie. Skies it over the top, but that connection is almost telepathic between those two. Oh, it is telepathic. Uh, Nan's looked up. The reason she plays that ball, Dowie makes the run. She says, I want it here. And Nan doesn't play that ball unless the run's made. So ultimately, Dowie is dictating play there. And that's what good strikers do. Uh, she's so dangerous. And, and Monica's on her, a very seasoned defender. Well, and here we go again with Melbourne victory. This time, Leah Privatelli. Wants to cross it in. Not controlled yet by Georgia Campagnale, now by Colaprico. Katie Norton thinking we might just add one more before half times. Jones runs onto the ball. Oh, that was dangerous for Melbourne Victory. Sam Johnson and Bianca Henniger forced to rapidly come to collect. Shinori looking for Alonso, who does have the pace. That one a little beyond even her speed. 
due to the injury to Mel Taranto. We will see three minutes added on. Plenty of time for either side to add another goal. Flag goes up, but Huerta was going to be well away. When Atoli there, she's, uh, she's playing risky football, playing for the offside rule. And she's lucky she got it there because she'd allowed that right back to run into the space. It's really dangerous. Holly delivers. Norton again out jumping Dowie, and perhaps that is a strength defense of this Adelaide side. Well, now Huerta released. Beautiful ball again from Danielle Colaprico. That's a Chicago Reds teammate. Manages to dribble around Natoli, or does she? Nice work, sorry, from uh, Guljan Kocha. It was a really good match there. It was good one on one defending from Kocha, but Huerta, she's a handful. She's always looking to take her defender on. Well, Colaprico with the ball now, possibly another chance for Adelaide United. They're coming thick and fast. Turned over again by a loose pass. And then again with the ball at her feet, picking out Natasha Dowie. Can't control that time, and Monica sends it back. And it's getting quite feisty out there as the halftime whistle approaches. Playich not uh, afraid to have a go, delivered in by Dowie as no white shirts waiting in the box. There's still a lot of, although it's effective at times, that ball to Dowie, it's becoming quite predictable. And it seems to be the only way that Victory are going to score at the moment. I think that's something that uh, Jeff Hopkins will speak to his team about at half time. They really need to move the ball, switch the point of attack. They're not doing that well, but it's equally because Adelaide United are not letting them. They really need to get their uh, their 7 and 11, their wide players involved. Well, they need to play again between Dowie and Nan. This time Nan has a go with the left boot. Flashes just wide. Perhaps it's some of the uh, Premier League players being forced to play a little bit out of position. Rachel Alonso I mentioned smashed in 17 goals at Premier League level, but she tends to play in more of a central position. So perhaps it's just a bit of uh, adjustment. Not so for Sophia Huerta. She's adjusted easily to playing with Adriana Jones. Jones cuts back. Oh, just over the top of the crossbar. And yeah, that's an example of maturity. She's doing well. She certainly is, and she'll be well happy with that first half, as will all of the Lady Reds and the crowd here in Adelaide with 45 minutes gone in their first match of the season. It is Adelaide United who hold the upper hand. Stella Rigon and Adriana Jones opening their accounts for the Lady Reds, who head into the sheds pretty content with their first half. Halftime here in Adelaide, it's the Lady Reds 2, Melbourne Victory 1. Stay with us after the break. We wrap up all the first half action. to Russia has just hit a couple of little stumbling blocks. And it is a dream start for Saudi Arabia. Genki Haragenshi, and they have scored Japan. Two draws in the last two games. Qualification is not.